Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and use art brushes in Illustrator. Before we start with this tutorial, let's see what it is that we're going to achieve. What we're going to do is to create an art brush in Illustrator that looks something like this, and then see how the various coloring options allow us to change the way that this art brush looks. We're also going to look at scaling the brush effects and we'll have a look at creating some of these sorts of brushes as well in Illustrator. They're very easy to create and they're fun to use. But to get started, let's create a new file. It doesn't really matter too much what size the file is. I'm going to start by creating that stacked circle brush. I don't want a stroke, but I do want a fill, and I'm going to choose a fill such as this orange color here. I'm going to start with a circle, and I do that by using the ellipse tool and holding the shift key. That makes us the circle. Now to make the stack circles, the easiest way to do that is with the original circle selected, choose Effect and then Distort and Transform and Transform. Turn the preview on so you can see what you're doing. We want four copies because we want to end up with five dots. And we're going to move them in a negative vertical direction. And right now we've got the same size dots, but I want them to get smaller as they go higher. So I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical sizes to 75%. So each dot is 75% of the size of the one before. And I want them a bit closer together. In fact, for this brush, I'm going to do something just a little bit different and have them actually overlap. So I'll click OK. Now right now, what we've got is just a single circular shape and it's taking all these shapes with us, but they're not independently selectable and they can't be independently edited. To do that, I need to choose Object and then Expand Appearance, and then Object Ungroup, and that ungroups them so that we can work on them separately. I'm going to select the second one of these with the fill color showing. I'm going to start to recolor them. In fact, let's start with the top one. And I'm going to use this coloring here. So I've got a swatch of colors ready to use. And let's go for this lighter color. So let's make that our brush. And of course it needs a stem because it's going to be a sort of plant-like brush. So I'm going to choose the line segment tool. And I'm just going to draw a straight line for this brush. Now that doesn't mean we can't make it a curve later on, it just means that right now it's going to be a straight line. So let's pick up the stroke and let's pick up this orange color and we'll make the stroke about three points. I'll press the selection tool so that I can select over this entire shape and we're going to drag and drop it in here to make a brush from it. We'll select Art Brush and click OK. Now this dialogue can look a little bit tricky, but one of the nice things to know about it is that not much of it is actually set in concrete, so you can change it later on if you want to. I'm going to use Stretch Between Guides because I don't want this part of the brush to be stretched out of proportion. If I use a really small brush, I want it to have a stem like this, but definitely to have this same head on it. To protect the head from being skewed out of proportion, I'm going to bring this line, this guide, underneath it. So this head is always going to be that sort of proportion. I'm also going to leave the colorization method right now at none, but we'll see in a minute how we can change that. And I'm just going to click OK. That's all I need to do. And let's move the design out of the way because now we have a brush. Now I can create a line that is going to be brushed one of any number of ways. And right now I'm just going to use the pencil tool. So I've got it set pretty smooth. So let's just click OK. And I'm just going to draw a nice line for my brush. And with that line selected, I can now just apply the brush to it. Now the brush's paint is sort of upside down. I'd rather it was 
at the other end, but I can easily change that for this instance of the brush. And I do that by clicking this icon here. If I double click this one, I change the entire brush in future. If I change just by using this icon here, I'm only changing this instance of the brush. I'm going to click to flip it along and click OK. Now let's have a look and see what happens when we change the stroke color. Let's choose this blue here, or this red here, or this green here. And you can see it's having no effect at all on the brush because the color that this brush is in the brush palette here is exactly the color it's being painted here. But it doesn't have to be that way. With the object selected, let's go back to this brush panel here. And let's have a look at our colorization options. We can choose tints. And when we choose tints, it's tinted according to how the tints were here, but with this stroke color. So I can choose a different stroke color and the brush is going to be tints of that color based on the tints in the original brush. You can also use tints and shades. Here's tints and shades. And that's going to give us a slightly different effect. We're going to get tints and shades of the selected color, the color that we have selected for the stroke of our brush. And there's a final option, which is hue. What this allows us to do is to shift the hues in the brush according to the hue that we have selected here as the stroke color. So whatever we select as a stroke color is going to have an effect on the colors that the brush is painted with. So you can get some really interesting color schemes this way. It's important when you're working in Illustrator to understand the difference between having a brush line selected here and making changes to how this one looks in comparison with making changes to the original brush. Now I've deselected this brush here, but let's go and make edits to the original brush because what I'm finding is that repeatedly I'm having to select this flip along option. So I'm going to set the original brush up to do just that and I'll click OK. But you see the brush was already in use and I may not want to apply the changes that I've just made to that brush. In other words, I may not want it to be reinstated to the original colors. So what I'm going to say to Illustrator is leave the strokes that I've created already in place, but just change the brush for the future. So I'll click that. You can see it's had no effect on the brush strokes that I might have already done, but it is going to affect this brush as it is used in future. Let's go and create yet another pencil line segment for this. And now let's apply the brush to that. And you can see this time it's flipped along its path, so it's working a little better for me. Let's consider before we finish with this brush how we would make this smaller. Well, one of the ways that we can make it smaller is to use the brush options again. And this time, instead of making it fixed at 100%, we'll make it fixed at a smaller percentage. And while our shape hasn't changed in length, the stroke and the head of the brush have been reduced considerably in size. So we can get a skinnier result if we want it. Now the brushes that I showed you earlier here are just as easy to create. Let's create one or two of them. And I'm going to start with an ellipse here and let's make this the fill. So I'm just going to create a regular ellipse here and then a line. For this one, I'm going to create a straight line and I'm going to give it quite a hefty stroke here. And this will be my brush, so I'm going to select these pieces and just drop it into the art brush here. I want to stretch it between the guides, so I want the head of my brush to stay the way it is. And I'll just click OK. Let's move that brush out of the way and let's create a second one. Again, using a filled oval. This time I'm going to select the direct selection tool 
and click on this anchor at the very top of the oval and I'm going to convert it to a point and perhaps even make it a little bit taller so it's looking like a sort of teardrop shape. Now this time instead of a straight line let's add something a little bit more curvy. So I'm going to grab the pencil tool and I'm just going to draw a wavy line for the end of this shape or the end of this brush. Let's just curve this around a little bit. Let's go and pick up our line and I'm going to give it a stroke. So let's just click on the stroke and let's give it a stroke color and a bit more of weight here. Well, I don't think I've got the right stroke color here. So let's just make sure that we get the correct one. So now that I've again got this shape, I'm going to drag and drop it to create an art brush from it. Again, I'm going to stretch it between these guides here and just click OK and I can move it out of the way too. So let's see how we would use these new brushes. I'm going to create a pencil stroke for them. So let's just create a curvy line and let's click to create our first brush. Now because this original brush here had a straight stem on it, you can see that the stem of the sort of floral paste is following the line of the pencil. Let's see what happens to this one which already had a bendy line in it. I'm going to draw yet another pencil line and I'm going to click to apply this brush stroke to it and this time you can see that the pencil line I drew has almost negated the curve of this brush. If I went the other way I'd probably have an even better result. So let's just create this and let's apply this to it. And you can see here that the bendiness of the brush has been a little bit more even because of the bending of the pencil line. It's a little bit harder to get these dead accurate because the brush is being drawn off the edge of the pencil line because of the wave in it, but it will allow you to get some interesting results and it's really a matter of choice as to whether you draw your brush with a wavy line or a straight line and then whether you build the bend in using the pencil or just wing it and hope that you'll get something that you like. I'm not liking that one so I'm actually going to remove it. So there are some ideas for creating art brushes in Illustrator. There's a lot of potential for using art brushes and for being able to color them. And now you know that you can color them by selecting the color that you want to use, such as an orange here, and then going and changing the way that the colorization method is being applied to that brush. This is going to be particularly important not only for the brushes that you create, but this can also be used with any art brush in Illustrator. So any art brush that anybody has created in Illustrator, you now have the power to adjust the brush and to work with it and to colorize it in the way that suits you. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom and a whole lot more.